Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Bowen. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. We'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. We'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have arrived. First Contact Radio. It's time. First contact it's time. radio. We it's have time. arrived. It's First contact radio. It's time. First contact it's time. radio. It's time to demand First contact the radio. Truth. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Glad you could be here. Today's the last Friday in the month of May, the 29th of May. Let's see what we're dealing with today. Our sun sign is in Gemini. Our moon sign is in Libra. Gemini and Libra. So let's take a look at what these are. Gemini, as we know, is the tarot card of the lovers. Libra, tarot card of justice. This is an air sign. This is also an air sign. So we have double air today. What do we know about air? Air moves. Air moves. So when there's an air day, it's a day that there's going to be movement, activity taking place. Air in tarot cards is represented by swords. Swords, you take the first letter S away, you left with words. So air, when there's an air sign, you're dealing with words and actions, activities. So that's what today is about, a lot of activity. The activity of Libra is about balance, trying to balance out karma, balance out our lives. And the way we balance it out is by the things we say and the things we do. Whereas Gemini is all about discernment using our discernment to make proper choices proper choices in the relationships we have with ourselves, with others how we communicate with others and this key secret to hear is that the conscious mind should be looking to the unconscious mind and the unconscious mind should be looking to the higher self and if that's the process the way we go about it we're gonna make good choices because we're deferring to the highest part of ourselves to look at the answers that we need to understand Okay, so that's what we're dealing with today. Libra for the moon sign and Gemini for the sun sign. The particular aspects we're going to deal with, we just had an aspect uh, with Uranus, Libra and Uranus at 7.17 a.m. And this was like the teeter talk. Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Thank you. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Bowen. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. We'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. We'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time arrived. To demand First Contact the truth. Radio. It's time. First contact with the radio. We it's have time arrived. To First contact the radio. It's time. First contact with the radio. It's time to demand First contact the truth. radio. We it's have time. arrived. First contact. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. It's the last Friday of the month of May. We have a sun sign in Gemini, a moon sign in Libra. So Gemini, we know by now, is the tarot card of the lovers. It's all about discernment. The idea is that our conscious mind, the male, wants to connect with the female. And the female, the subconscious, should be looking towards the higher self. And when that's the case, we have a nice, good mix of how we should be looking to find the answers in our life. Always deferring to the higher aspect. And our moon sign is in Libra. Libra is the tarot card of justice, karmic balance. Libra is an air sign. It's about the words we speak the actions we take. So let's look a little bit further here. Okay, we had 
a square at 2 a.m. Uh, with between Mercury and Neptune looking at things from a new perspective lessons maybe in our dream state just a little while ago less than an hour ago we had an opposition here between Libra and Uranus unexpected changes within the way we balance things new opportunities new ideas then as we progress on into the afternoon Venus gets into the mix with the square against Libra Venus wants us to apply love and imagination okay just remember on days like today it's an air sign for the Sun sign the moon sign is also an air sign air moves so if we look at the elements air moves and as air moves we find that uh, that's how life is activities words actions things like that that's what air is all about over the course of this weekend we could see that uh, we are moving into a uh, next sign Scorpio for the moon sign over the weekend and then next week we'll progress accordingly we look at the wheel we could see where our opposition is here here's our moon sign opposite Uranus Uranus is in Aries so unexpected changes in this event unexpected changes new beginnings opportunities leadership All right, over on the Jewish calendar, 11 Sivan is the name of today, 11 Sivan. The daily thought is time for I. There are times to bend like a reed in the wind, and there are times to act as stubborn wall against the tide. There are things that lie at the periphery of life, then, in, then every eye hold like this and my opinion is stands in the way of harmony and peace every such I is the very root and source of evil but when it comes to matters that touch the purpose for which we are placed in this world that's when you have the immovable wall that's when you have to say on this I'm not going to budge that I that's not evil that's an I fulfilling the purpose which which you are given an I okay Current moon phase, 84% of the full making its way up to a full moon. I know that because it's a waxing moon. We're at space weather, solar winds, 387.5 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is in the two range, which is quiet. Not much in the way of coronal holes at this moment in time. M class flare possibility at 5, X class at 1, geomagnetic storm activity. Looks like it's 20% in the mid latitudes, high latitudes, uh, 30%. So we might see some activity over the weekend. And of course, looking up at the sky, the 29th, as the stars come out, you'll find that only Spica, only a few degrees to the right of the moon at the time of dusk for North America, the moon draws further away from it through the night. And that is our cosmic weather. UFO News is up next. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. There we go. Thank you very much, Dirk. All right, I have a number of sightings here today. The first one here, alien ship offers assistance to Apollo 13 crew in NASA photos. Okay. There's the Apollo 13, there's the UFO, a little bit more close up. Look at what's going on here. This amazing catch up of a UFO visiting Apollo 13 module was found by YouTube user StreetCap1. As you already know, the Apollo 13 crew were having trouble and barely made it home. This leaves three interesting possibilities. NASA called the species of aliens to ask for help. The NASA craft was observing in case they needed to offer assistance, or the alien craft, and three, just pure scientific observation. Okay, it's a video here, one minute, 17 seconds. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Next sighting here, uh, red UFO over Nevada County, California, May 2015. There's their object in question out here. All right, 
This is unusual second photo from another pilot, but from an ultralight. I searched and yes, there are ultralight pilots in that area. The photo looks similar to the first and the detail is almost the same. However, on the UFO you can see that it looks like it has more light reflecting on it. The object appears to be facing the pilots at both times with the same side of the UFO looking at them. The tilt is normal. The tilt is necessary for propulsion to move in. According to Bob Lazar, some readers are skeptical as they should be today. UFO reports are easy to fake. The site itself does have some satire, so caution is noted here. However, if you Google search, you can find either two photos without the UFO in it. Then you have your evidence. I tried and failed. If you find one, leave the URL in the comments below. All right. And this says another pilot has come forward with a photograph revealing a second unidentified flying object over Nevada County. The pilot of the ultralight craft, who had traveled from his hometown of Lodi, California, to visit his Grass Valley girlfriend snapped this exclusive shot of what appears to be the same red flying object over rural Nevada County. It was on my approach to the Nevada County Air Park, said the ultralight pilot who chose to remain anonymous. When out of the corner of my eye, I spotted this red speck. So my maneuver in my craft, about to get a better look at it, it was moving so fast up and down. I've never seen anything like that. I managed to get one picture of it with my iPhone before it disappeared straight up. The aircraft is similar to one spotted over a Scott's Flat Lake last week by the pilot of a Cessna 172 based out of Nevada County. The unidentified object appeared to be siphoning large quantities of water out of the lake before also disappearing straight up. This particular UFO did not seem to be doing anything other than flying around erratically fast. Okay, let's move on to the next sighting. Here in glowing UFO seen over Batexo. Financial Tower, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Okay, that's a nice good sighting there. Check out this sighting of Vietnam last week. Look carefully at the disc shape when lights added to it. We clearly make out a massive disc. It's no plane or helicopter. This thing we has been seen all over the world, even in Taiwan three weeks ago. Very similar to the UFO seen over radio station during the same time of the San Diego, California on May 3rd. And uh, under the Mexico Tower, one of the group mobile phone users to capture the image at night. Shooting is completed. The team pulled together to dinner. Two cafes opened the phone reviewing the photos were taken. The whole group was startled to detect a foreign body like UFOs in the left corner just above helipads of Mexico Tower. Team members had heated arguments about the mysterious object. People say that UFO, who then said it was a toy or filming equipment, a fly cam. Okay, good images there. That's where it was seen. Pretty good shot. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here we have a cloud seen over Brunico, Italy, May 26th. It's well known. For it was coming from the direction it's going. Okay, let's move on. Triangle UFO over Seattle, Washington, May 25th. I just received this report from our reader. Apparently, this triangle UFO is hovering above Seattle, coastal city, and the seat of King County in the U.S. state of Washington. It was filmed from a car Monday, May 25th. Okay. Very interesting. Nice good triangle. All right, I'm going to leave, go on to the next story. UFO activity over a volcano in Colima. There's our volcano. Okay. Here's an interesting report from the third millennium about strange UFO activity in the sky above. Volcano Colima in Mexico. This happened back in March. Okay, and again, this is something that we can certainly capture from the live webcams right there. Okay, let's move along to the next story. Okay, uh, UFO entrance exit holes found in Ural Mountains, Russia, May 2015. Good size hole there. These holes are appearing all over the Ural Mountains and all 
they have our some good guesses, but scientists are still baffled by the exact cause. I do believe a UFO is being transported below ground could cause such a thing. However, it is unique and probably only caused by one particular species. The area seems to have many holes, so it is possible an active alien base is below the Urals. Okay, subterranean Soviet missile stations or tunnels to the center of the Earth. A whole host of theories have emerged after a large hole appeared near Russia's Urals Mountains. An emergency situation committee has yet to say what caused it or how they are responding. Meanwhile, mysterious sinkholes have appeared elsewhere in the region. Okay, very interesting indeed. Is that a UFO f that made that? Don't know. But stories there if you can continue your research. Strange light sparks UFO mystery in Shropshire. It was a straight line of bright lights and it has become the latest UFO mystery to strike over the skies of Shropshire. Stephen and Adele Edwards were today asking for help in figuring out whether they have captured footage of a UFO flying over their home. The couple who live in Noble Shrewsbury have left, been left puzzled after spotting this pattern of lights on the footage on their close circuit TV over the weekend. Mr. Edwards said our CCTV camera in our garden caught an image of what looks like some rather strange lights in the sky. I used to be in the RAF, and at first I thought it was lights maybe from the flares, but they were not. I've checked with some friends in the RAF who have confirmed that there was no military activity in Shropshire over the bank holiday weekend. The lights seemed to be at a distance of approximately half a mile from the back of our property in Nobold and approximately 400 feet altitude, although it is difficult to tell from the image. Okay. Links available, firstcontactradio.com. Here's an obvious UFO in a cloud. UFO was taken shortly after departure from Queenstown, New Zealand. And you can definitely tell this is something a bit out of the ordinary. Just the way in which this cloud is here. Okay. Very interesting indeed. Some sort of a craft, perhaps. All right, uh, thousands of witnesses see UFO in skies over China. Some were just curious or puzzled, while others were terrified at the blazing object, which experts said was not a meteorite. The unusual trail left by many left many speculating that it might have been a UFO of an extraterrestrial origin. Witness Hu Yin said it clearly visible in the sky, and many people simply stopped. The autonomous region of Ningzinka Hui. It was even reportedly seen in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region in the country's north. Some speculators thought that it might be some sort of weapon testing done by the Chinese People's Liberation Army, while others said it could have been the launch of a spacecraft. There has been no official word from the Chinese government to explain the appearance or the light or the Kohwash conspiracies. And one last story here. A 10,000-year-old statue contains coded message about human origins. A 10,000-year-old statue believed to be twice as old as the pyramids of Egypt has been sent to Germany for research. Covered with Mesolithic symbols, archaeologists believe the 2.8-meter-high statue is one of the most important discoveries in recent history. The statue of seven faces has the potential to rewrite our history books and ways of thinking, as researchers say the coded message is on to contain information about the creation of the world and the origins of human beings. Okay, this is a 3 minute and 59 second video. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions, but these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth.
continue on here. Having a few technical glitches here. I don't know if you're aware of them out there, but having a few here. So this is the last day in the studio here. I've been here for a few years, and uh, today is moving on to the next location. So uh, the show will be down probably for maybe a week while I go through the relocating process. But uh, as soon as I'm ready, able, I will be back up. All right, um, here we have a story. This is called, Is Lucifer the Same Entity at, as Anunnaki's Enki? Lucifer's personalities personifies humanitarian goodness and enlightenment. All of the characterizations of Lucifer are blasphemous and inaccurate. In Freudian sense, Lucifer is called self-rebelling against the superego, the psychic faculties analogous to the judging and condemning father figure, both internally and externally, for the sake of the creator of humanity, while facing much opposition from his malevolent brother Enlil, who was representative of the left-brain patriarchal consciousness. Enki saves, enlightens humankind in the garden, closed them after Enlil drives them out and saves humanity from the deluge with which Enlil attempted to destroy humanity. The God of the Old Testament is a composite character formed by the combining of these two forces. Good and evil must exist in an interlocked package. One is defined by the existence of and in the Nag Hammadi library, we went over the Apocryphon of John. And just a brief summary of what went on in there, what we have is a story where Jesus, after his resurrection, he spent 40 days back on earth. Um, he had these discourses with his apostles. And here is one with Apostle John. It's called the Apocryphon or the Secret Gospel in which he tells the story of humanity, how it came to be. And the story that he told Jesus tells in here is different than the story that we know from the Bible. According to this story, there is a character named Yaldabaoth, who is the creator of humankind, but Yaldabaoth was a fallen being. He was considered the the error, and he went and he created this reality. And then later when found out that there was it does seem to be that these characters are the same. Um, Enlil, or Enki, and Yahweh, and Yaldabaoth, um, they seem to all be the same fallen ones. And, then, or, and, and Enlil, I think, instead of Enki. And then Enki was the one who created humankind and then later got lumped in as being the bad guy whereas he was bringing the wisdom. So all these stories are all kind of convoluted, and we really need to kind of find a way to unweave what's going on. Lucifer means light bearer. We talk about light being information. So is Lucifer someone who is an assistant that was helping and then got a bad rap? Remember, history is written by the winners. So did somebody write this story, and this character got a bad rap when he was trying to help humankind? I don't know. All I know is we have these stories, and it seems to be the same characters over and over, and I know that we just simply need to pay attention in life to what's going on in these stories, and not let anybody else tell us how to think for ourselves. And even with these stories, I don't want you to go and believe everything I say. All I'm hoping to do is point you in the right direction where you also can study the same things, look up the same information, and think for yourself. The way I understand the story that the God of the Old Testament, Yahweh, is the same character. Yaldabaoth was the fallen one, and all that was created by Yahweh then was created by the fallen one. And God, the eternal mother, father, the God, mother, father of eternity, and, and the entirety then came forth to help humankind evolve. Of course, none of this occurred without God of the entirety knowing what was going on. That's why God is God, because God knows all that is happening. Um, anyway, so we just need to keep paying attention so we don't get caught up in the myths, truths that are out there. All right? All right. A lot of mistruths in this world, my friends, you know. It's watching what's going on. 
uh, if you read some of the forums and whatever what have you 28th 29th is a day that uh, some said California was going to fall into the ocean we're still here uh, there's a lot of dates that you can read when you go to forums of people saying this is going to happen on this date this is going to happen and you think to the book of Revelation it says there's going to be rumors there's going to be rumors of wars there's going to be lies and deceit it's all part of the times that we're in we just need to use our discernment and we need to be able to think clearly mental functioning switching to that of a higher dimension the way we process thoughts and communicate in 3d and 5d are completely different experiences as we ascend into the higher dimensions we'll begin to notice that at times that we are not processing our thoughts and communication the same in 3d we use words that have definitions to communicate with each other in the higher realms there's a lot more perception involved I would like to share with you my personal experience sometimes I find myself seeing feeling and experiencing my reality in 3d in 5d perspective some of you may begin to experience some shifting of conscious into 5d thought forms as well ascension is a gradual process each person ascends in their own way you may have noticed experiencing some of all what I have maybe even more words in the higher dimensions don't have nearly as much substance as they do in 3d they are communicated with more thoughts feelings and images and in this state words are often replaced and your logical side of the brain will begin to work at more accelerated rate to process and translate it all back to 3d format for understanding and relaying information you can find yourself seeing multiple dimensions simultaneously this includes but is not limited to coexisting in more than one place at a time while you're in this reality you function more in a knowing answers just begin to flood in from multiple places these aren't necessarily in the 3d thought form at first your mind will work harder to understand the process this information into a 3d thought form your movements can be more like that of a dreamlike state you can move around going you may also notice you start actually talking with your eyes could appear to wonder and roll around the eye contact with people just falls away when talking to people from a 3d view it appears that you are off your rocker however this is furthest from the truth there is nothing wrong with you your thought process is shifting into that of higher dimensions it says now I've decided last paragraph and I decided to come out of the closet and share my experiences I've been working with this in private I don't have much control over it I used to have toxins such as few puffs of a cigarette to bring me down in a more controllable state I do not recommend this to anybody however consuming toxins will lower your vibrations I'm currently looking for healthy ways to stay more grounded during this transition if you have any of experience or knowledge I hope you comment below okay so nice good article just asked a question because we are going through a process we want to know if we are making changes accordingly moving with the changes that are around us so it's good to know all right here is the council the council may 25th 2015 channeled by Ronald head the council we choose today to speak about the subject of safety and so naturally we shall begin by taking a look at fear fear is one of your biggest obstacles for many it is a constant companion. It is, in the final analysis, a lack of faith in oneself, in one's future, and a lack of understanding and faith in the universe itself. You say that you believe there is no death, yet you fear death. Now, it is true that the body's mind has a fear reaction to pain and wishes to live, even in its last instant. And it is also true that by far the greatest number of you identify with the body that you inhabit. Even if you have studied and believed great numbers of teachings, that say you are not that body, still you identify with it. You feel as if you are inside of that body, and that you are not outside of it. For what it may be worth, we tell you that you are outside of it, and that it is inside of you. But we are speaking of safety, of security. How can you find this? Instead of living in a constant feeling of being in peril of losing your life, what if you could live in constant knowing that nothing could possibly take that life from you? Would thinking it work? Not really. Professing it? You do that. Does it work? Not really. 
Blind faith? Doesn't seem to work so well, does it? What produces real trust is experience. Does that seem true? This is, in fact, why those who have had what you call near-death experiences are forever changed. So let's all run out and have one of those. Please do not try this at home. Now if you could experience the memories of having lived several times before, if you could experience the memory of being outside of your body, and still being here to tell about it, would that help? Of course it would. Isn't that a great part of what happens to those you call adepts in many of what you call spiritual practices? And once one experiences these things, a great Memories are returning. And along with the memories will come that knowing, that certainty, that you are eternal, that this moment is the only time that is. And that is security. That is safety. We trust we have given you food for thought. Be at peace. Good day. All right. Very nice message. That brings us to the Warrior of the Light. Today we're on page 75. A warrior of the night light cannot always choose his battlefield. Sometimes he is taken by surprise in the middle of battles, not of his choosing. But there is a point, no point in running away, those battles will merely follow him. Then at the point when conflict seems almost inevitable, the warrior talks to his opponent, showing neither fear nor cowardice. He tries to find out why the other wants to fight, what made him leave his village in order to seek him out to fight this duel. Without even unseating his sword, the warrior persu persuades his opponent that this is not a fight for him. A warrior of light listens to what his opponent has to say. He only fights if absolutely necessary. So, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale again. And another breath, and exhale. Let's just imagine ourselves walking along the path of life. All of our chakras are activated from the bottom of the spine up, red, orange at the belly button, yellow below the rib cage, green at the heart, blue at the throat, indigo at the third eye, violet at the crown chakra, and the light continues on. Imagine your being, your entire body, filled with this light. And imagine this light expanding out to fill the space where you are at this moment, this room where you are in. And then see the light expanding outward from the room into the city. And from the city into the state, and from the state to the country, and from the country all around the world. <laughs> 